There was a time in Evansville when people lived for Aces basketball. During the era of A.I. McCutcheon, basketball was more than a game. It was also an important social experience for people of all ages and all walks of life. This time period marks the golden age of Aces basketball. Throughout the 1950s, Evansville experienced its ups and downs. It was a decade marked by economic troubles when major employers Cervell and Chrysler left town. Numerous strikes were held at many Evansville factories, which sometimes resulted in violence, and gave Evansville the reputation of a bad labor town. While there were many disagreements over labor and urban development, many in Evansville could find common ground when cheering on their own Purple Aces. Aces basketball was um, something that um, dominated the sports page, dominated the society page. You didn't schedule a party on a night of an Aces game because nobody would come. They'd all be at Robert Stadium. It was the thing to do even if you didn't like basketball. People would arrive in town, hear about Aces basketball, and go. So it was more than just an athletic event. It, it was a social event, and it, it was the thing to do in town. The town supported the team immensely uh, because the opportunity for uh, entertainment was much more confined, uh, a few theaters, things of that nature. So something for people to really get behind, and they really promoted University of Evansville as just, it was Evansville. It was what everybody supported as a community. You know, the, the focus was on U of E, U of E basketball. It was also the, the focus of the newspaper and, and television coverage and everything else. Uh, it, was, it was just kind of a special world. In 1956, a new era was born in Evansville with the opening of the brand new Roberts Stadium. The stadium would soon become home to one of the greatest sports franchises in Evansville history. In 1959, just three years after Roberts opened, the climate was right for an exceptional year in Aces basketball. The Aces starters were all returning after an impressive year in 1958. However, the Aces began their season 0-2 with losses to Purdue and New Mexico A&M. Luckily, the losing record did not last long. Led by the superb old man Hugh Allring, who had served in Korea before joining Evansville College, and dominating center Ed Smallwood, U of E went on to win their next six games. With four losses halfway through their season, the Aces would only lose two more games. At the end of the regular season, they had a 14-6 record overall and finished third in their conference with a 9-3 record. On March 5th, Arad McCutcheon coached his team to a 66-54 victory over Belmont Abbey in the first round of the NCAA Division II basketball tournament. The Purple Aces worked their way through the bracket until they made it to the championship game against Southwest Missouri. On March 13, 1959, Arad McCutcheon and his team of Purple Aces stunned their opponents and earned their first national championship, an 83-67 victory. At the end of the exceptional 58-59 season, the total home attendance was 99,641. The stadium was packed, and this was the old stadium, not, not the renovated 1990 stadium, but we had the chair backs, and then the, the benches, and then the bleachers, and the chair backs were of a different color, and the bleachers were packed all the way to the top, just a sea of people. We used to fit 13, 14,000 people in there. After losing guards Allring and Cox, hopes for the 1960 season were not particularly high. Coach McCutcheon predicted the team would achieve a 500 record at best, but after losing their season opener to Iowa, UV began to catch fire, winning 10 in a row, including a 71-50 blowout against Butler. After losing their second game of the season to Kentucky Wesleyan, the Purple Aces wrapped up the regular season, losing only two more games. They finished the regular season 20-4 with impressive wins over Notre Dame, Butler, Indiana State, Kentucky Wesleyan, and St. Joseph's. After advancing out of the regional round of the tournament and then defeating American in the first round of the finals, the Aces were faced with a familiar opponent, Kentucky Wesleyan. During the regular season, the team split the series one-to-one. -one. Now one game would decide who would advance to the national championship. 
the Aces proved victorious over their rival in a defensive battle, 76-69. U of E had battled their way to the championship game against Chapman. In their chance at history, the talented Aces crew defeated Chapman in the final game. And for the second consecutive year, the Evansville College Aces were crowned Division II National Basketball Champions. Previously, no other team had accomplished such a feat. Ed Smallwood was named the tournament MVP, a fitting end to his great career. After an unsuccessful campaign in 1961, the Aces focused their attention on recruiting. McCutcheon signed Larry Humes out of Louisville and received a promising transfer from Illinois, Jerry Sloan. By the time the 1964 season approached, the Aces had gathered impressive depth. Starters included Jerry Sloan, Sam Watkins, Larry Humes, Buster Briley, and 6'9", Ed Zausch. Coming off the bench, Wayne Boltinghouse, Russ Greiger, Jim Smith, and Paul Bullard formed the Fabulous Four. This exceptional first and second string combination made the Purple Aces line up an unrelenting force. This bolstered lineup finished the regular season 21-3 and, and undefeated in their conference. During the season, Evansville packed a total of 134,622 fans into Roberts Stadium. The Roberts Stadium was a pit. The, the stands were a little bit farther back than when before the renovation, but it was, uh, uh, I think, uh, sometimes the fire marshal would look the other way, and they had more than 12. They sometimes had 13,000 in there. Some of the most impressive victories were against Arizona, Ball State, and a jinx-shattering win over Big Ten powerhouse Purdue. On March 13, 1964, exactly five years from their first national championship, the Aces took the floor against Akron for an yet another national title. The Purple Aces clinched the victory 72-59. Coach McCutcheon declared, yes, I believe this is the greatest club we've ever had. Little did he know, the best year was yet to come. At the forefront of Evansville's 1965 season were Larry Humes and the fabulous Fox, Jerry Sloan. With these two All-Americans on the floor, the Aces were bound for an incredible year. In fact, it would be one for the record books. They started the 1965 season ranked as the number one men's basketball team in the college division. The Aces backed up their hype with wins against tough opponents, Iowa, Northwestern, Notre Dame, and LSU. It seemed as if nothing would slow Evansville down until they played Southern Illinois University and their superstar, future NBA Hall of Famer, Walt Frazier. As time wound down on the game clock, the Aces trailed 80 to 79. However, Larry Heems would save the day by scoring in the final seconds to lift Evansville to an 81-80 victory. And we played Southern Illinois. There was eight seconds left to go. And we had the ball. They was up one point. We had the ball at the far end. Coach McCutcheon called a timeout. You drew, drew up a play. Now Sam Watkins threw the ball into Jerry Sloan. Sloan from the free throw line threw the ball all the way down to the other end of the court. I took myself on the free throw line. I caught it. I spin and shot it over my head. It hit the back of the rim, stopped. The time ran out. It still was standing there and fell in. I don't know how I made that basket, but I knew I had to get it in. So whatever it took to get it in, I was going to get it in. Uh, so uh, that, was, that was one of the games I always remember uh, because uh, the, the play Coach McCutcheon drew up was an excellent play. Everything just worked just right. I was able to get it off over my head. I, I didn't even see the basket. Just went up there, went back of the rim, stopped, and went in. After their nail-biter against SIU, the Aces moved on to continue their dominance. They handily won their next nine games, four of which they scored over 100 points. With one game left in the regular season, the Aces looked to preserve a perfect record against a familiar opponent, Southern Illinois. Again, Southern Illinois was only one point shy of blemishing the Aces' season with a score of 68-67. In the end, Arad McCutcheon's crew had finished the regular season a perfect 24-0. However, perfection did not stop there. The Aces still had to prove that they were number one in the NCAA tournament. 
They breezed through the regional round of the tournament and advanced into the finals. After two more wins in the first two rounds of the finals, Evansville would have to prove themselves one last time against SIU, this time to defend their national championship. The, the championship game was, was just nuts. There were people literally hanging from the rafters almost. There were people on the skywalk watching the game up above us. Um, and, and you couldn't hear yourself talk, almost couldn't hear yourself think in the stadium. The Aces once again would not be denied. Their 3.85-82 victory over SIU would bring a perfect end to this historic season. Arad McCutcheon, Jerry Sloan, Larry Humes, and the rest of the 1965 Evansville men's basketball team had truly achieved perfection. 29 wins, zero losses. Larry Humes also shattered records during this dream season, breaking the previous Indiana Collegiate Conference scoring record of 323 points with 403 points in 12 league games. Following the 1965 championship, Jerry Sloan moved on to pursue a career in the NBA. Humes, Williams, and Watkins would stay behind for the 1966 team and finish the season 18-9. and nine. After these last champions left, the Aces continued to be a respectable program. However, by the 70s, the past glory of the Aces national championships had faded into the background. I, I think if you look at some of the photographs, you see a lot of empty seats. Uh, and that was unheard of because just a few years earlier, you couldn't buy a seat. However, the fans would get one last reprieve when a prominent local talent would grace the Aces hardwood. In 1971, the Aces initially were scrambling to find the right combination on the floor after some injuries and a few player departures. Off to a rough start, the Aces won only four of their first nine games and placed second in their own holiday tournament, with the Aces' schedule only climbing in difficulty. Coach McCutcheon decided to try new players in a different approach. The new starting lineup sacrificed some height, but included impressive scorers Don Boozy, Bob Clayton, Rick Smith, Rick Coffey, and John Wellemeyer. This turned out to be the explosive combination the Aces needed. With momentum rising, they achieved a 7-1 record in the month of January and pulled out key victories over DePaul, Butler, and rival Southern Illinois. The Aces crew was put to the test with a loss to Kentucky Wesleyan and a frustrating giveaway to SIU, which concluded the regular season. They sailed through the Great Lakes Division and then humiliated the Northeastern Tournament winner, Hartwich College of New York, at Roberts Stadium 105-69. Advancing to the semifinals, the Aces were paired with the national favorite, Southwestern Louisiana, who boasted the nation's leading scorer, Dwight Lamar. Determined to take down this formidable opponent, the Aces turned to their defensive devil, Don Boozy, to contain Lamar, while Bob Clayton helped to bring down crucial rebounds. With Lamar held in check, the Aces prevailed 93-74. Amazingly, only Old Dominion now stood in their way of yet another national title. The Aces' coffee put up 18 points in the first half, with Boozy and Martin pitching in with key defensive stops. These ingredients spelled victory for the Aces. As the clock ticked down, the previously unranked Aces brought the national championship back to Evansville in front of an overflowing crowd of over 13,000. This brilliant Aces crew proudly handed their coach Arad McCutcheon his fifth and final title. When asked later, McCutcheon said, this was the most satisfying championship because it was less expected than the others. Coach McCutcheon retired just six years later. The Arad McCutcheon era is now regarded as the golden age of Aces basketball. Aces basketball is in my DNA. I, I can't literally say I bleed purple, but if I could, I would. Um, Basketball in Indiana is obviously special, and uh, you know, I feel so attached to that, that program, even though I didn't play. To me, it means a lot more than just a game. Aces basketball meant everything to me when I was growing up. It was what we did on weekends. It was, it was a focus of, of all my interest in sports. Uh, Evansville basketball meant to me the heart and soul of this community. To have the opportunity to play on the national stage uh, in, in a sport that you love 
and to have a community that backed you to the level that they did, uh, it, it was just absolutely a spiritual kind of event almost for many of us. And I was impressed again at how, and I had come from a couple of schools where unity and team spirit were big, and it was great to see a town where it was focal uh, and it was centralized around one team. Uh, so the two national championships are very, very great. Uh, my first experience at a ball game at the Aces, it was a great experience for me. But the biggest thing is the fans. They lived and slept and waited for ball game. 